Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Rome run here in Victoria 3. Last episode we did dismantle the French Empire a little bit, um, and so that was kind of the main thing, but we also made a ton of progress towards enacting presidential republic, and so finally, hopefully, we will be able to institute the Roman Republic the good old fashion. Um, and with this, you know, institution of the Roman Republic, we will turn from this white to a nice red color, um, as it were. Um, currently there's a very large war brewing that we have going on uh, I think that it's best we just don't get involved in this um, we do so we have a decent number of troops but we have recruiting that needs to be done almost all of our loud cars outside are pretty loud and you see we'll have a ton of units like this where they only have like 59 manpower and I so our our fighting capability is really not that uh, brushed up and so even though Austria is gonna get steamrolled here uh, we'd rather not steamroll it than, wow why they put in so many war goals man they, what is this, conquer Silesia, transfer Bremen, conquer cars. Yeah, that's a little a little bit grim. Uh, but we will be, uh, yeah, like you're going to enforce that. Um, but I think we're just going to play a little bit of chill mode and just go for Israel instead. Uh, go for a protectorate. We'll look to slowly incorporate them. Also, there's a chance that they back down in this. Um, and we do want to make sure that we're accruing infamy because we did slip down into zero infamy uh, last episode uh, without having anything done. So um, we do want to get onto something right away and see if we can maybe sway into that. It looks like we can't and so we'll have a we'll have a little bit of a go at Israel uh, whom we just released uh, but it wasn't our war goal um, and we're not expecting to see anyone too substantial uh, side with us and if we do uh, more than happy to try and fight uh, any one of these guys and Israel just backs down so that'll that'll kicks things off uh, pretty well for us and so we will continue along um, you know doing our thing uh, getting uh, as much of the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea as possible as our primary expansion spot um, and so uh, eventually we do want to go after Portugal uh, but we are not going to do it right now they're in the Austrian market um, you know, we thought it might have been a good opportunity to go for Portugal, like, immediately, uh, but they keep getting swayed into some, by some other person if we, like, do it, and so we keep reloading, where it's currently bugged out, where if you sway, uh, to become a protectorate, which is what they keep doing, now you can't just enforce by landing Portugal, and instead you can get them to minus 100, uh, but you must, in fact, enforce on the new overlord entirely, which is a bit of a grim proposition and the overlord won't want to back down and in particular with austria uh that is very difficult to you know austria might get wrecked but it's very difficult to push austria uh and it will be very difficult for us specifically to push austria and so we'll just leave that alone for now and just kind of you know go after tripolitania this type of things uh a little bit of some soft ball uh kind of expansion spots and also we get a bigger rome lettering which is truly what it's all about. I don't think we pointed this out, but we have built the university up to level 31. Uh, that way we are getting maximum throughput. And so um, this is kind of why the techs are coming a little bit faster. We do, ha we are 90 over cap. And so that excess 90, 60% of that is going into our tech spread. And so we are looking as part of our strategy to be starting to go a little bit ahead of time. And I think that we keep on getting gummed up on various like inabilities um, or just to kind of having to play scared around the GPs, especially because we're operating in the Mediterranean versus recognized powers, really, uh, countries will side much more aggressively when you are going after recognized powers, and that's kind of, we, we went after the unrecognized powers for the most part, and so we're going to have to go after um, some, some recognized powers, and so to that end, uh, it would help out a lot if we could actually get a navy going. So what we're going to do is we are going to research this up 12.5k uh, on ironclad, and then we're going to swap to gantry cranes, uh, that way we can slingshot shot ahead. We just finished uh, Dynamite, which is going to help us out a lot. If we didn't have so many peasants, we'd go for Steam Donkey too, because we're basically all mines right now. Um, but um, it, it's okay. Uh, we have a lot of peasants, so we don't really need the labor-saving PM. We don't really have a lot of places with oil right now. Um, I mean, we're about to get it with Tripolitania, so that's going to be nice. Uh, and then Steel Railway Cars would kind of be the other tech we'd be interested in, but it's not spreading to us anyways, and so maybe it seems, or it seems to me like a pretty good time to maybe get in on some of this military tech. Um, you know, we would want breach loading as well, so maybe if, uh, you know, shell gun and rifling somehow finish, no, 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 then we won't be ahead of time anymore. So uh, that's kind of how things are going. We could go for, you know, something in the society tech, maybe. 
And maybe this is better. Maybe it's just better to eco up, actually. I, I'm not sure. The, so the thing is, is the other thing we could go for would be, like, uh, steel frame buildings would be very strong as well. It's probably better just go steel frame buildings, get a bigger stick. <sighs> yeah, let's get a bigger stick. Let's buy a bigger stick. But I think that we're maybe at a point, uh, we're not really making money because our, our investment pool is draining. But maybe we even want to overbuild here in Lazio, uh, some of the universities, even over the cap. Uh, because we're starting to get to the point where, you know, I, we feel a little bit behind in terms of some of the tech. Uh, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that we first researched, uh, you know, um, what is it, realism, which was the realist. And so that's it, it does feel like we're a little bit more behind uh, the usual trend. But we can university out of this. So um, I think we'll go for steel frame buildings, actually, instead of uh, the instead of going for the ironclads. But the ironclads, we'll keep an eye on that. That'll be near future, I think. So we get a trade agreement with the newly uh, released Occitania, which I think we're going to try and pull in our customs union, because they actually have a decent chunk of pops here, 10 million pops. Uh, and if we can siphon those off in kind of the long term, this is going to be really useful for us. We won't go super hard in the paint, uh, but we'll improve relations with them and try and get them in. I think that maybe we try and do this with Spain and Portugal as well, uh, because if we can siphon off uh, pops from them, uh, then they will be cheaper for us to take anyways. Um, Triple Atania, of course, is going quite easily. Um, no one's really going to side against us when Austria... Or Austria is not going to look to side against us, um, you know, while they're getting uh, smacked. Uh, unless we had really, really high infamy or something like this, but we don't. Uh, and so we'll be able to enforce pretty quick here. Um, Morocco looks like they've also finished uh, colonizing the places with which they have claims. Uh, and so if this is the case, then we can annex Morocco as well. And so really getting a nice uh, kind of grip on North Africa here. Um, with what's Egypt? No! What's going on? What's this... Oh, no, no, okay. We're fine with banned slavery in Egypt. We're fine with this. What we're not okay with is Egypt getting, like, protectorated, which is because we want to do that. Yep, 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 yep. Looks like the Ottoman Empire has done us a kindness in joining in our war to annex Morocco. So we'll get the good old two birds with one stone. Uh, Ottoman Empire is completely uh, going to be out of position here unless they move troops, like, immediately, like yesterday, away from these fronts uh, that are involved in the great big no-good war um, and over to this, because otherwise, I mean, this we're just going to shellac them here. We have our landing parties unopposed, just going to push into, you know, the western portion of this country, and this is just going to, this is just going to dice them, like, immediately. There's really not going to be, and as soon as one of these landing parties is finished, uh, we're just going to move them around and um, have them land in Morocco over here, and we're just defending uh, against Morocco currently. But once this 20 stack finishes up, yeah, this is just a slaughter. And what we're going to be getting from this is the liberation of Iraq, Cyprus, and Albania. Cyprus and Albania being the two key countries um, that we need in order to kind of go for Mare Nostrum. Notably, uh, it's going to be less essential to, like, liberate Bosnia, for example. Son. Uh, and the reason for this is that it's not coastal. Uh, but these other two are and so they will be uh you know nice feathers in our cap once things get going and as you can see uh you know we are uh making short work of them here where are you going no going to the wrong spot my friend but yeah, this should be over pretty quickly. Um, uh, we do have uh, 16 infamy now, and so we can afford to do some slower wars as well. Uh, we are planning on declaring wars, uh, war on the Ottomans next, and so this is actually incredibly nice because um, we figured we would have a decent amount of infamy, and this breakup sort of war where we just have them release a whole bunch of guys was actually super what we were uh, you know, planning anyways. And so um, this works out really, really well for us. And it's also going to be nice getting some of the gold that Morocco has because they do have gold mines they have some decent minerals and it will give a nice you know stretch of roam across the top of uh, africa which everyone loves um yeah uh and then uh over here cyprus and them being free is also going to be tremendous let's see if we can can we get another naval landing maybe not 
ooh, we gotta get these guys out of there. But that's more of a micro thing. Um, we don't want them spoiling our progress on uh, pushing, so we will swap them to defense and then move them somewhere else, maybe over here, and have them push from over here because they don't have uh, anyone defending over there. So if we can get these types of events a lot, that'll be fantastic. Uh, Greece gets kinder image in seven days. If they accept, uh, Roman infamy is decreased by 10. So we would love to do that. Uh, and so we will remind everyone how great a friend we were. Uh, and did they, did they accept... They rejected the suggestion. Okay, well, you know, that that happens too. Unfortunate. But, uh, legislative failures, no! Our kingdom for a red Rome, please. I'm in so much pain. <sighs> okay, I guess we might not even be getting it this episode. God, that's... That's so frustrating. Really don't want to go for parliamentary other, either. Oh, you know why we failed? We insta-failed? This guy died. <laughs> the guy who we were really needing uh, in order to pass the law died. That's unfortunate. Uh, we also need this guy to, like, step down, to be honest. The problem is, is who's the heir? Do we even know the heir? This guy's maybe too young for that. Only been around the block once. Mm. I very much dislike how strong this event is, a novel solution where it gives plus 5% authority permanently, uh, but it's a very strong modifier and so you do kind of want to keep an eye out for it, as it will allow you to do more consumption taxes, which will allow you to construct more, um, although consumption taxes aren't necessarily the be-all end-all. Um, we also kind of messed up not landing uh, just kind of here initially, uh, and so that'll be a little bit rough for us. I'm gonna struggle a little bit. Uh, but the Ottomans should be kind of about ready to be done here, even though we're, uh, you know, kind of having a little bit of difficulty uh, fully getting in on them here on the uh, Moroccans. And so once the Ottomans are done, we can just bring the, the main force, which is over here, this big 103 stack, uh, we can bring this back. In fact, are we, are we making forward progress here? I'm not really sure. We could just cut down uh, one of these guys, so we'll just have one guy pushing, uh, which is generally gonna probably put us in a slightly better spot, so why don't we do that? Uh, considering we don't need to make progress here, really, um, just progress is kind of nice. Looks like Austria is actually really getting pushed in here. Wasn't expecting them to also fold to that extent. Um, we were expecting to see kind of a bit of a status quo type war, which is uh, the usual business, but they're really, they're really folding up here, which means that, you know, maybe, maybe we're supposed to, maybe we're supposed to declare war on Austria, because this might be the very weakest Austria is right, right now, but the problem is our war doesn't start by the time Austria capitulates, I don't think. So maybe we should have gone for Austria at the very beginning of this, wasn't expecting them to get this rolled up like a carpet. So... In any case, we should be enforcing on these guys momentarily, and then we will have the big nice. The big nice being, of course, a nice-looking border. I think we do need to kind of move this guy over there. Uh, and by border, I mean name across the top of North Africa, where it will say Rome. Hmm. It seems that there's a rebellion getting in the way of this. So we have done most of the research on steel, and now we have a little bit of a cho uh, choice whether we want to eat the inefficiency, or I think what we're going to do is we're just going to research psychiatry ourselves, finish psychiatry real quick, and then finish off steel frame buildings uh, because we have very nearly enough to get it without the malice and so by researching psychiatry we'll get rid of the malice but since we know that this is pretty soon on the horizon here what we're going to do is we're going to look in the places where we are planning on uh you know coming in first to put in the steel which is going to be the places that have coal and iron and we're going to make sure that they are coming on up and having enough of the the steel stuff that they can do we not have enough pops here we don't have too many pops there uh really piedmont is going to be the the shining star because they are the ones that have kind of available pops and coal and iron and they're kind of the only state that we have that fulfills this condition you know we have some coal here we have some iron here we have some pops in both those spots and that's kind of uh what we got going on um 
you know, Sardinia also has a ton of the resources, and we'll probably actually turn on Sardinia uh, pretty early here. So we'll get ready with a little bit of glass on Sardinia, as well as upping the steel, but we will just want to be in place for when we are going to turn this on. And so this is generally a pretty good practice where, you know, when you know that you're going to be getting up on needing all of this stuff uh the the inputs for steel frame buildings then you prepare them ahead of time that way when you get to the point uh you don't have as big market fluctuations we'll still only be turning on steel in like half the places or three or four places rather than all of them but this will smooth things out a bit so our construction is coming up quite a lot uh, off the back of turning on steel frame in various places uh we're running a little bit of a deficit but this should be a pretty quick come up um, off the back of this, especially because we had prepped, uh, you know, being able to swap all these things. We have about a third, maybe 40% um, swapped now, and we're going to look to continue to swap most of these. As far as what we're doing militarily, which has kind of been uh, playing around a lot of things, has been a very, ooh, ooh la la, maybe we get to sway in here, but playing around a lot of this stuff has become uh, a, quite a strong feature. It doesn't look like anything too, too crazy, uh, but playing around, mm, maybe we could yo-yo sway these guys. This is possible. So uh, what you do is you offer, you support one, and then you offer support on the other, and sometimes they switch to become subject. Looks like we might not get it here, but we can just go for a trade agreement, something like this. Uh, which is something we would want with them anyways, uh, and we'll just send over a token army. But what I was saying is we want to wait, uh, we want to wait until we have really low infamy, and then I think we go after Egypt here, which is not the best target for any type of gameplay reason, not even remotely close, but it, it does seem like the most Roman target to go for. Even ahead of Portugal, you know, Egypt was a very important, uh, you know, uh, economic um, boon for Rome, especially in the early days where it was where most of the uh, economic activity was happening. And so um, I think we might just scoop that up. Uh, and also we've declared interests. I've decided that, you know, we were organically avoiding declaring interest in Senegal and Niger, but then I realized that we actually couldn't make colonial progress as a result of this. And so um, I decided that, you know, if the Romans had extended their borders to here, just right adjacent to it would probably be okay. So we're starting to colonize down into here as well. Anyways, we'll dust them up in this war. Oh, maybe we're supposed to reduce someone's autonomy somewhere. There's not really, we don't have too many subjects. Oh, well, I guess we could reduce autonomy here. So uh, before the war starts, uh, actually, no, we should have waited. Oh well, we're, we're eventually annexing Bulgaria anyway, so this is going to be a fine, even if the sequencing is a little bit strange. Um, we are trying to get Occitania into our customs union. We could take on their debt, or we could just give them an obligation. Why don't we just owe them an obligation? This way we will be able to siphon off migrants from them, uh, which will help us out a great deal, because they have about 10 million pops, uh, and we accept those pops because I believe they are Catholic. And that's, uh, that's just what we need because we are still on state religion. So, um, yeah, you can look at the migration attraction difference. And so this will mean that their pops will start flooding to us, uh, which is going to be really useful for us. Um, also, I think we probably just passed... Uh, oh, nope, we haven't passed them yet. Uh, but we are in fifth place currently in terms of global GDP. And we are just behind Russia. And if you look at the shape of Russia's graph versus the shape of our graph... Obviously, ours is a little bit more erect. Um, Great Britain still having, like, an absolutely colossal come up, but, like, I don't think uh, we need to really fight them unless we wanted to get old Roman borders up to here, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's in the cards for this run. Maybe it is, but uh, it seems, it seems perhaps a little bit, a little bit much given how in uh, most recent patches the UK really, really tends to pop off. All right, this is just what we needed. Uh, we are, get the echoes of revolutions, which we get a radical liberal. Um, and I think that we are going to say, let's hear what they have to say, because we would prefer to be able to swap on a presidential republic. Unfort or, well, here's the thing. We want to get this protectionist guy. We want him to be a radical more than anything. So let's do, let's hear what they have to say. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite us in the sense that uh, we don't want all the laws that the radicals want, but... Uh, we do want some of them. Ooh, looks like we have a woman. Uh, that is interesting. I thought that, hmm. I, w I was under the impression that we couldn't get female agitators while we were on legal guardianship, but okay, that's a bit interesting. Uh, in any case, uh, we are still just kind of decaying down, still kind of looking to expand up on the construction. Um, we do have on the horizon, though, uh, something that 
We have Steam Donkey coming up, so we've put a little bit more coal in the queue uh, in anticipation of finishing Steam Donkey. And kind of the reason for doing this one is we were lagging on getting our, our productivity bonus on these things, probably because we overproduced them a, a little bit. And so um, the labor saving PMs do help you to get the productivity because it decreases the denominator uh, with which productivity is calculated, um, which makes it so that you get a much bigger number, uh, even if the building is not as, as profitable. But also we're starting to run out of pops in some of our better areas to construct um, that we you know want to build steel and we have inputs uh, for both steel and the other stuff and we're starting to run out of pops in these areas and so I actually think it would be a decent one as well um, and on top of this uh, it's gonna get get better and better if we can continue to expand the customs union uh, this stuff will get better and better because we will be able to siphon off more migrants and so uh, this will help out and we relationship wise with Portugal and Spain it's going a little bit slow in terms of pulling them into the customs union um, and those are kind of the big ones we do want to get Brittany inside the customs union as well at some point um, but um, for whatever reason it was kind of it wasn't letting us trade stuff to them I guess it's letting us trade stuff to them now uh, we'll give them fine Roman bread and send them on our their way so we get an airborne and it's an intelligentsia market liberal which is not too bad um, I'm not sure it's gonna matter but uh, if we were staying on monarchy that would be pretty nice Look at this guy's magnificent beard. Okay, looks like Egypt backed down as well, which is the thing we are kind of really starting this clip to talk about, which is that we were going to be going for them, but they just backed down. And so we have a nice, big Roman market to sell the Roman bread. True bread for true Romans. So we just finished um, getting our uh, ironclads here and i think i'm going to engage in a play pattern i've never done before which is go straight from ironclad into monitor and ignore gantry crane um really just kind of want to get to a new level of navy more than anything else and we can just turn on the naval shipbuilding stuff uh to do the ironclads and then keep all of the um you know the economic stuff uh the same and just leave this alone uh for now which i think is kind of what we're interested in before we kind of make a little bit of a turn towards society tech um we don't really have a ton of rubber um so that's why we didn't go rubber mastication into vulcanization which is normally like hyper meta because we have been playing in a way that has prevented us from expanding in reasonable areas and so um this is kind of the current uh, state of affairs we have subjugated congo and we've started colonizing that here here are our current interests which i think are you know fair enough eh, maybe this like would have been better in terms of representing roman interests but i think at this point it's um you know pretty uh, pretty reasonable for us to go in africa and we would really want uh, we really want rubber and so uh this will be the way we get rubber we probably won't mess about with the new world at all um or you know southeast asia or something like this and instead focus on africa for the rubber which i think is the most rp kind of uh place to expand for it Russia's also in the midst of imploding, and I think that um, we we were trying to keep good relations with Austria as well as France. I think we gotta get, kiss this goodbye, uh, mainly because uh, Austria has claims on some of our territory, and they were trying to provoke rebellions, uh, you know, with uh, this event chain and the some of the other ones. And so I think that long term we're just gonna end up fighting them a bunch, of this, and that this is not a, a a worthwhile investment of Diplo. And while instead we could do something like trying to keep uh, make our me decay faster and so this is what we're gonna do also not going universal suffrage absolutely sucks right now um we're not doing it for rp reasons but man um it would be so easy to pass and then get everything else we want through um very 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 easily as well as you know demarginalize the trade unionists who are going to be super hard to demarginalize um without uh without um the help from you know a different voting system but we're, we're gonna stick with this i think and, uh, you know, the, there's like the, the thing where people say that Romans invented steam power, but then they were like, why do steam power when we have slaves? This type of thing, which is another thing in theory, we should have gone slavery, but like, we're not going to do that. Um, also, um, maybe I'm crazy, but it seems to be the case that our intelligentsia doesn't naturally support uh, getting off of religion, and I'm not 100% sure why. Um, but, uh, this could just be some sort of oversight of mine. Uh, but I was... They do not naturally support it. It's not like they have an ideology or they're, like, theocratic. They're just reformers, so, um, 
that was a little bit strange for me, uh, kind of seeing that. Um, and we, maybe it's because we have the Nihilist, or had the Nihilist, like, event chain earlier, and maybe if you don't do it well, they stop caring about the religion, which, if that's the case, getting off of the state religion, which we definitely want to do, um, is going to be a little bit rough, because I think we're still going to go multicultural and such, uh, just to kind of allow us to migrate out. Anyways, we must attend to our queue. So there was another massive war brewing uh, for German leadership, and then Austria just backs down, uh, even though they didn't get enforced on in the last one, which is going to be, uh, I think we're kind of neutral on this, um, except for the fact that we were... We did subjugate Hamburg a long time ago, and we could have, uh, you know, maybe tried to make some moves insofar as uh, doing the Confederation of the Rhine. Now that's not going to be possible, really. Um, but uh, this, uh, this notably also is giving us an adjacency to the North German Fed for trading purposes, uh, which is actually quite nice and something we've been kind of a fan of throughout. But now we get a pretty big North German Fed, so I don't think we're going to get the, you know, Roman borders up to and through here uh just kind of taking a look and we can are double checking that we could uh colonize mauritania now our colonization is creeping down and uh our construction is creeping up except this is kind of a little bit of a specter that is definitely uh gaining on us more than anything else um and so we've been trying to build into it but maybe this is not possible uh gdp is kind of swelling up uh where we've become fourth place now pretty pretty pulling pretty far ahead of russia because of russia's uh you know massive revolution nonsense and then also we are you know significantly helped out on the migration front by some of the new additions to our market in occitania and Brittany. so that has been helping out as well we finished the tech and are upgrading the monitors now which should give us a pretty good shot at actually being able to play the naval game on top of we don't really have a really stretched out, you know, we're very consolidated here in the Mediterranean in terms of, like, what we got going on. And so it's, uh, we're not going to be that stretched out and it's going to be easy for us to maneuver it. Now, as these put in, we are going to gain more and more interests. Uh, and so we will finally be able to start, like, really peppering, you know, it, even in the time we were talking, uh, we gained more interest there. We're going to really start being able to put interests everywhere, uh, which is going to be pretty nice. And so we will have a little bit of global reach in terms of what we can side with um and this is going to be i, I think our primary interest is um being able to side with people in order to go after people we do have to break up spain um and uh i mean i guess we got to break up the ottomans a little bit more because uh, we got to get them to one power rank lower which would be nice and they're not very close and so we it looks like we would have to release quite a few it's nice that they're <laughs> they're completely cut off net there in terms of their market which is something uh and the presidential uh republic is doing kind of okay it looks like uh, why don't we do yeah, that one? Uh, but we do have this revolution brewing, so we don't like that. We don't like that one bit, and so we've struggled a lot. Like, really, truly, it would have been very easy if we, as soon as we got a really big movement for universal suffrage, just went universal suffrage first into trying to pass this stuff, but we're we're doing it the difficult way here. Uh, and so we will keep on keeping on, but hopefully we get a lucky tick here and we get to keep pushing. We also uh, started to pretty aggressively put in uh, several government administrations so we could go after institutions here, uh, which are going to be nice for us. Um, we are coming up all the way on the health system, which should be able to help with the migration, uh, which we are now being able to siphon off from, uh, you know, if we take a look, from people in our customs union, uh, like especially this Occitania, which is kind of serving as a battery for us for now, uh, because they are Catholic uh, and we are on state religion. So this means that we do not accept most pops um, or like uh, we don't, for example, accept the Bulgarian pops, I believe, because I think they tend to be Orthodox, if I'm not mistaken. And so since they're not Catholic, they can't migrate over here. But since these guys are Catholic, we can actually siphon off them in terms of migration. And we would really love to get off of um, <laughs> we would really love to get off of, uh, being on state religion, but we can't do it. Or we don't, we, we need an agitator specifically that's gonna enable to do it, us to do these. So, we'll choose the other one. Ah, uh, the Curie is already gonna be mad. Um, they're gonna be just real mad. Uh, and another thing is, we also have a hard time pulling in 
well, this guy we could pull in, uh, but we have a hard time pulling in people um, uh, to agitate because, in fact, we're going to invite this guy now because we know that down the line we are going to need uh, our cooldown for uh, promoting the government. I think we used our promoting the government cooldown not too long ago. Mm. Uh, but this guy we are hoping could agitate maybe for, since he's a nihilist, he does oppose uh, state religion, and so we can maybe use him. Anyways, there was a larger point I was making, I forgot. But maybe we, maybe knowing this, we, with the discrimination, our, our discrimination problem is, uh, we have to solve the religious one first, so maybe going for human rights and a feminism is a bit of a, a bit of a waste here. Maybe we just finish up human rights. Um, and then look to do something else. We don't really have a, a sink for uh, oil yet, but maybe we could export it. Uh, we do have some in Tripolitania that will appear. We could also go rubber mastication instead. I think I like this, so we'll make a we'll change things up a little bit, knowing that. I mean, we can't. We're still on state religion, so getting multiculturalism is really not going to be the boon that it normally is because we have to get off of this first, and we're struggling to get off of this. So we have a double moment of truth here. Um, first of all, if we low roll this, we will have a revolution. And second of all, and so we're going to choose the one that's more likely to uh, not provoke a revolution. But second of all, we will have uh, one more roll on presidential republic to try and do it without a revolution. And it looks like we do have a little bit of a save. Maybe we don't provoke the rev, but this rev is going to be coming up quick. I think we have one tick on this before it happens. And we uh, are invading Israel too, um, looking to reduce their autonomy. Uh, and French commune, be commune in. Um, and so, ooh, uh, wait, what happened here? Wow. Okay, so we supported the French commune with the idea that this would reset relations. It <laughs> did not reset relations. Uh, and so we just have uh, the, this belligerent France. Uh, fortunately, they are giving us, you know, something in the way of influence, which is allowing us to do more things. Let's actually try and improve relations. Maybe we should even be bankrolling here somewhat. The problem is, is that, like, none of these guys we can really get too many migrants from, except for maybe Portugal. Portugal's not too expensive. Let's actually just bankroll Portugal. Oh, how the tides have turned. Um, it's also going to be a lot less uh, influence to uh, do that with Portugal rather than um, improve relations. But we're going to improve relations with a few more of these guys that we're looking to maybe pull into our customs union. I mean, maybe Spain. And it'll be easier for us to reduce autonomy, something like that. We're still floating nearly max for infamy decay. But let's see. Moment of truth. Is it time for red roam? Please. We've had so many low and bad rolls. I just really want to... We're going to call our one time for this video recording. Although we don't normally use a one time. The trial. Alright. Well, you know... We're gonna say smell you later with some regicide, I think, because this rev's popping anyways. So smell you later. We get some regicide in, and we get a presidential republic. And of course, with that, we get the red Rome, and it's looking pretty nice. Look at all that. It looks so much nicer because all these guys are light colors. There wasn't enough contrast, although now we have a bunch of red colors over there. That it never ends. But that is going to be Rome, the Roman Republic. And now we will get a new uh, thing to enact cultural exclusion. We super don't mind having cultural exclusion. Um, well, we kind of do, because I don't think it allows us to do... I don't think it gives us any more access, but this would help us to get rid of uh, quite a lot of radicals. Total number of individuals supporting this movement. So um, if we can just get rid of some radicals uh, and we have this revolution brewing, I think that this is fine. Um... I mean, we're planning to go multiculturalism sometime soon anyways, and so it's not too big a deal um, as far as things go. Oh, we really want to get off of state religion, but we can't. The truth hurts. But in any case, I think we're going to conclude the episode here, uh, because this episode, we have restored the Roman Republic. 
uh, along with the right color, which includes, even includes Australia over there uh, as part of the Republic. Uh, we will be able to reduce autonomy or keep reducing autonomy on these guys and probably try and look to do a little bit more market moves um, with some of these things um, because it would be nice if we could pull people into our customs unions. Like Occitania, we eventually want to go after uh, and we eventually want to protect her at them. But they're too big. But if take a look at their pop chart, look at that. They're actually declining in population. And this is a result of us siphoning off so many migrants from them. If we hover, um, you know, you can see and you can see where they're going and they're going to Italian places. And so we're super happy with this uh, and we wanted to continue. And we need specifically at this moment Catholics. So anyways. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We uh, restored the Roman Republic. If you, uh, if you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I just mixed two sentences together there. Anyways, have a good one. Toodaloo. Bye-bye now.